To make this spider's web, I'm going to need my 5x7 hoop, some wash away stabiliser, sharp scissors. I'm using white in glow in the dark, black for the actual spider. Then I've got cutaway stabiliser. Now I like to add this to mine so that when the wash away is no longer, um, it still supports all the stitching. So I've cut four pieces to five by eight. Then I've got my batting. You can use pellon, whatever you want, felt even. Um, I've got four pieces cut to five by eight. I've got one piece cut to three by three. Then for my fabrics, I've got the red. There's two pieces for each part, front and back. And they're cut to eight by five. So I've got eight of those in all. One piece of black for the spider at three by three. And the backing for the spider one piece at three by three as well. This design is made in five parts. So I've loaded the first file into my machine and I'm going to hoop my stabiliser. This is my wash away stabiliser. I'm just going to pop that in there. Push down hard. And that's that. I'm also going to put a piece of cutaway over the top. And now I'm going to pop it in my machine and I'm going to do the outline stitching. I'm going to turn my hoop over so that the back is facing upwards. And I'm going to put my backing fabric over the outline stitches, making sure that it covers it all the way around. And then I'm just going to put some masking tape on the corners to hold them down so it doesn't slip when it's in the hoop. I like to use masking tape rather than pins whenever I can. It's much safer for your machine if things go a bit wrong. Okay. So now I'm going to put the batting over the top and then my topping fabric over that. Just make sure that it's covering the outline. This is okay. And now I'm going to put it into my machine to stitch it all down. Next I'm going to remove all the excess batting, fabric and stabiliser both from the front and back. Really be careful not to cut the stitching. If you do, and it does happen sometimes, um, don't panic, don't pull at it, just leave it because it will be hidden in the next round of stitching. I'm just going to trim up to the stitching so that it's all nice and neat. So when I eventually put all the pieces together, it all sits nice and close and all the stitching is hidden. I'm just about done now, I think. Now I'm going to turn it over and trim up the backing as well. I haven't put any glow in the dark in my bobbin because it's not going to be seen because it's on the back but if you want to of course you can Okay, 
okay that's all trimmed up and neat now I'm going to pop it back in my machine and it's going to do the zigzag stitching and then afterwards the satin stitch for the spider's web I'm now going to remove it from the hoop by cutting it away. So I'm just going to pop my scissors in there and then cut all the way around the edge. Now, you don't want to cut too close to the stitching because this is wash away stabiliser. At the end of making this I'll run a q-tip uh, dipped in water around the edge and it will disappear. Now along the side edge I do need that cut very close to the stitching because that's where it's going to be joined to the next piece. We're now going to do the second piece. I've loaded the second file into my machine ready. I'm going to hoop this uh, some more uh, wash away stabiliser. And I'm going to pop it back into my machine now to stitch the outline ready to do the second part. I'm now going to turn this over and I'm going to put my backing fabric over the outline. You can use spray basting on your fabric. Um, if you do, make sure that it's, it's the proper stuff for quilting and machine embroidery otherwise you will go up your machine and ruin it. I've put some spray basting on here for the sake of time. Now I forgot to put the uh, cutaway down before I stitched the outline so I'm going to do that now. It really doesn't matter as long as I put it on there. It's fine and now I'm going to put my batting over the top and my fabric over the top of that. Just make sure that it's covering all the lines. Now the advantage of putting the um, cutaway down before you do the outline stitch is that when you come to lift this up you can see exactly where your fabric is in relation to the line because it will only pull back as far as the stitching. So as long as the fabric pulls back with it, you know that you're in the right place. That's why I prefer to do it before I do the outline stitching. So now I'm going to put this back in my machine and I'm going to stitch it down. Now that that's fixed down, I'm going to cut away all the excesses as before. I just want to make sure that along these edges it's nice and close to the stitch line because I'm just about to join the first piece to the second. Next I'm going to add the first piece that we made to the top edge here. Now we want the stitch lines to line up with each other so they sit one on top of each other so that they, they end up hidden underneath the satin stitch. So I'm going to take that in place like that. And I'm going to put it back in my machine and it's now going to stitch and join the two pieces together. 
Now I'm going on to colour 5 and this is going to do all the satin stitching on the web part. The web's now complete so I'm going to remove the tape and now I'm going to free it from the stabiliser. Now that I approach this bit I've got to be really careful because of this flap at the back here so I'm going to pull it back and then I'm going to cut along here and I can pull that through and carry on cutting rounds. Exactly in the same way as before, I'm going to hoop my cut, uh, wash away stabiliser, sorry. And I'm going to place my cutaway over the top. I'm going to pop it into my machine and stitch the outline. Okay, so I've loaded the third file into my machine and we're ready to go. So the outline's now stitched. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to pop my backing on. I'll just remove these little threads here. If you can hear meowing in the background, it's my cat. He's in for attention. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to lay that down over the stitching. Flip it over. Place my batting down. And my fabric on top. I'm just going to check the lines. I was explaining earlier why I like to do it this way. I can pull that back now to where the actual stitching is and I know because this is creasing back that it's actually covering the stitch line and if I do the same this side you see I know that I can go to there and all my lines be covered. I'm going to pop it back in my machine to do the stitch down it. I'm now I'm going to cut away all the excess fabric and batting on both back and front. Okay, now I'm going to trim up the edges as before because this is going to be joined to the other pieces. Okay, so now I'm going to pop it back into my machine and it's going to do the zigzag stitching and once it's completed the zigzag stitching it will stop, let's put that the right way, it will stop for me to join the previous two pieces to the third piece. I'm 
I'm now going to join this edge along that one. Make sure you get your um, web up the right way because there is a slightly different pattern to the back from the front. So I'm just going to turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm now going to line up the two lines as I did before and take them down. Okay, I think we're good to go. Now I'm going to pop it back in my machine so that it will do the zigzag line to join that now. And then I'll go on and do the next round of stitching number five after that, which is the web. Okay, now on to the fifth round. So it's time to free this from the stabiliser. Just remove that tape. And as before, I'm going to cut round. I'm going to pull this back so that I don't cut it. i push my scissors in here and carefully cut along the join line. And I'm just going to cut the rest of it out now. Okay, I'm going to pull that through so I can see what I'm doing. So that's the three pieces joined. Now time to do the fourth. So I'm going to hit my stabiliser. I'm going to lay my cutaway over the top, pop it in my hoop and do the outline stitching. I'm going to turn my hoop over and add the back. Pop that on there. I'd like to give you a word of warning about using spray basting. Use the absolute minimum possible because if not, you'll end up with stitching problems. It will pull on the thread as, it, as the needle goes through, especially at high speed, and it can make your thread uh, start shredding, which you obviously don't want. So just use the tiniest, tiniest amount just to make it stick. Okay, now time for the batting to go on. And my top fabric. Okay. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to put it into my machine now to do the stitch down round. So now that that's it stitched down, I'm going to cut away all the excesses as before. And I'm going to trim back the edges here because this time we're going to be adding both sides onto this piece.
it's always worth taking the time to trim things up properly because it saves an awful lot of frustration in the long run. I think that's okay now. This time I'm going to add the bottom part. That's the first join. So I'm just going to align that and with a little bit of tape hold it in place. Good thing about these is once you've done one of these and you understand the sequence of how it works it opens up loads of different designs to you. It's just having the courage to try this first off. So that's there. Now I'm going to put that in my machine and it's going to stitch along here to join it now. The next um, colour stitching number four is going to do the zigzagging along the outside edge. Okay so that's that joined. Next it's time to join the other end. I'm just going to remove that tape and turn it round so that I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to line this up as I did for the previous pieces and I'm going to stick them down okay so now I'm going to put it back in my machine and it's going to do the joining stitch I just went to put this in my machine and it kept moving so I've actually put a couple of pins in well away from the stitch area just to hold it in place so that it doesn't move I've just put some tape on top I've removed the pins from my machine now that that's joined and I'm now going to do colour 6 which is all the remaining satin stitch So it's time to release this from the stabiliser again. So now I've got two edges that I've got to be careful of. I'm just going to flip this over and I'll start at this end. It's easy with my little scissors. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this last edge here, just pushing the back away from my scissors so I don't catch it. Okay, so now it's free. One last hooping to do, and that's to do the spider itself. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Get my hoop and my stabilizer.
okay I've placed my cutaway stabiliser on top as before I'm going to change the thread in my machine to black I'm also going to use a black bobbin so that it's reversible now the other change is I've decided that I'm going to use two pieces of black rather than one black and red on the back so I'll now get that in my machine and stitch the outline okay so that's the outline done I'm now going to turn this over let's trim off these threads so they don't catch on anything I'm now going to attach the back with some tape Okay, so I'm going to turn it over. I'm now going to place my batting in position. And I'm going to put the black on top. Normally I would put my fabric this way around and I would stick it down on the corners. But this time I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn it the other way so that it gives me more to hold on to up here because what's going to happen is it's going to stitch nearly all the way around leave an opening for me to be able to insert stuffing it's far easier to do if you've got something to hold on to okay so now that's in place I can stick it down with some tape If you can hear snoring in the background, it's my cat. Okay, I'm now going to pop that in my machine and stitch it down. Okay, I'm now going to remove the top piece of tape. I'm going to pull that back slightly and with my tweezers I'm going to poke the stuffing in here. And you can push it around with your fingers just to make sure it's nice and even. I'm just going to poke that bit back in there and then I'm going to stick this piece back down. And I'm going to pop it back in my machine and it's just going to stitch the last little bit across the top so that it, it seals the whole lot in. Okay, now it's time to trim off all the excess, so I can remove the tape. Take your time doing this bit because you really don't want to catch the stitching.
where it's black it's difficult to see. Kids absolutely love these and of course they're so much fun to make as well. I've got quite a few to do, what with grandchildren and friends' children. Now comes the interesting bit. It's time to add the, the web to the spider body and you want to try and align it as best you possibly can central to everything, which isn't as easy as it sounds. And when it's positioned, I'm just going to pin it because I really don't want this shifting. It's now going to do a stitch all the way around the edge to hold it down. I'm going to pin this but well away from the stitch area. And I will remove the pins before it does any of the other stitching. Okay. Okay, that looks fine. I'm now going to pop it into my machine to do the stitch down round. I'm now going to stitch it. You might want to slow your machine down and to do that you just have to keep stopping and starting it as it stitches around. I'm now going to remove the pins. You really don't want pins in in the next round of stitching because the needle is going to be flying all over the place to do the legs and the satin stitch so you want everything completely out the way now I don't know if you can see this it's done a zigzag stitch all the way around here to tack it down okay I'm just going to place a little bit of tape top and bottom Maybe not at the bottom but at the top just to stop it from getting in the way or catching and I'm going to pop that back in my machine now and complete the last round of stitching, uh, round five and that will do all of the body. I stopped the stitching of colour number five because I don't know if you can see here but I've got the edging showing from the web and the other problem I've got is just here the top fabric has lifted I've obviously cut the stitching as I've gone round so I'm going to show you how I'm, I'm going to correct that I've got some more fabric here and I'm just going to place it over the top I'm going to stick it down on all four points of the compass I just want it to hold, because there's a, a, a lump here now I, I just want it to hold firm while I restitch that area and I'm going to restitch colours 2 and 3 so that it completes the outline again and then I'm going to trim it away and then do 
the satin stitch on colour number five and hopefully that should correct the problem. The back's absolutely fine, I'm not worried about that, it is literally just the front. So I'm going to pop that back in my machine now and stitch colour number two. Okay, and now I'm going to do number three. Okay, so it's stitched around the edge. I have got a little pucker there, but in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's really going to matter. I don't think a child's going to be bothered by that. I'm going to remove the tape. Now, very carefully this time, I'm going to cut around the edge. I don't want to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to leave a slightly longer edge this time and then I'm going to put it in my machine and it's going to go around and do the zigzagging. Hopefully I won't have any threadies showing. And if I have, I can just trim them off before I do round five. Much as I hope that things go smoothly when I am filming, sometimes it doesn't and it's important to show you the mistakes and how to put them right, especially for new beginners. I think you get far more out of it by learning how to correct mistakes or get around things than you do just by hiding them. I'm going to do round four, which is a zigzag stitch, and hopefully this time I shouldn't have the same problem. Okay, with round four completed, I'm now going to move on to round five. Now for this, I'm going to fast forward through the stitches to arrive at the point where it does a satin stitch around the body. Okay, so I've folded through now and it's going to do the edging uh, in the satin stitch now. It's now all stitched and finished. Um, the, there's very little in the way of puckering now because the satin stitch took, took it all out as it stitched around the edge, it, it pulled it taut. So that was a pretty good save really, it could have been a lot worse. And you wouldn't know that that had been done. So I'm now going to release it from the stabiliser. And I've got some warm water here and a, a Q-tip. I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to go round the edge of the spider to release it from the stabiliser and this is just going to dissolve. I'm going to go and press it and then I'll show you it all finished. 
Okay, it's still a little bit damp, but I think that's a pretty good job, don't you? Thanks for joining me. Please give me a thumbs up if you found this useful. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're released.